Welcome to The Pier. Welcome to our online service for the week of December 4th. We're into the second week of Advent and our service is going to be an Advent service. And so I've got a reflection on the theme of love. We've got a time of worship. And if you're at, watching this later on in the day on Sunday or through the week, we've included a couple of other things, an Advent reading from a family in our church and also a story uh, because we're sharing stories together on, sh- on peace, hope, love, and joy. Today it's from our friend, Sharon. So before we get started, I just wanted to give you some announcements, let you know some of the things that are coming up in December. We know it's a busy time, but we want to stay committed to our value of being together, gathering, spending time. And so December 14th, we're going to be having a potluck dessert night. This is instead of our family potluck dinner. We're having a dessert night, a little more low key, but it's also going to be a time to worship together and sing carols, sing Christmas carols. So that's on December 14th. It's going to be at the pier from 6 to 7.30 p.m. You can RSVP for that by emailing randy.deroche at icloud.com. Let us know what dessert you're going to bring. Also, we know that Christmas at any time of the year, there's people in our community who are struggling in the area of food security. And our Sunday supper is a way that we partner together and come together to support people in that. So our Sunday supper this month is December 18th. We always could use extra help with that. The more hands, the better on deck. So you can email us at office at thepeer.church to find out how you can get involved. Lastly, just wanted to mention that this is a good time of year to consider how you might financially support the peer and the things that we do. Not only is this a chance for us to show our gratitude to God for all the good things that he's given us, it's also a chance for those who call the peer home to partner with us in our ministries and in supporting missions around the world. And then also making this possible, making our online ministry possible. So if you'd like to support us financially, you can go to our website. You'll find a link there. And also there's a link in the description below this video as well. All right. So that's just what I wanted to mention today. You can check out in our peer monthly or on our social media, some of the other things that are coming up. But we're going to move into our service now. And our theme this Advent is slowing down, taking time just to quiet let kind of escape the noise, escape the busyness, and remember that, like remember the importance of that. So I thought a good way to start our service would be to do just that, to slow down using the practice of Lectio Divina. If you've done this before, you know what we're talking about. If you're new to this, it's really simple. I invite you now just to kind of get yourself free of distractions and even take a couple of deep breaths, close your eyes. And I'm going to read a passage of scripture. I'm going to read it three times slowly. And each time we're going to pause in the middle. And it's a chance for you to ask a question of the Holy Spirit. First time is what, what word or phrase is coming up to mind? What, what's the Holy Spirit revealing to you? Second is why, why Holy Spirit is this coming to mind for me? And then third, what next? What does the Holy Spirit want you to do with that? So, Let's take that moment, if you want to pause the video, to take a deep breath, that's great, and close your eyes. I'm reading from Psalm 145. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, You satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. Let's read that again. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. I'm 
going to read it one more time. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for these words, and thank you for Holy Spirit for for speaking through them to us. We pray that they would resonate through the rest of today, even through our service now. We want to dedicate this time to you, Lord Jesus. May we be focused on you as we now join together in praising you. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See how His love overcomes. See what our Savior has done. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. If you believe it, let's sing it. And I know that you'll do it again. Before your promise is yes and amen. You have done great things. And God, you do great things. You conquered the grave You freed every captive And break every chain Oh God You have done great things We dance in your freedom Awake and alive Oh Jesus, our Savior Your name lifted high Oh God You have done great things Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Amen. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. sing that again. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done 
done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. God, you do great things. And you know, when we come together, we're not singing, really. Um, it's different. We're sharing our hearts with the Lord. I remember um, years ago, it was a children's pastor, and I heard her talking to the kids. And she said, in this moment right now, I want you to look at the door. And she said, walking through the door is Jesus. And Jesus is coming and standing right beside you. What do you want to say? And I thought, what a beautiful reality. Because the Lord says, where two or three are gathered, He'll be there as well. God's presence is in our midst. And so today, let's just share our love. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to see the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know No, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. And shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the lies. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Well, there's power that can break up every chain. Oh, there's power that can empty out the grave. There's resurrection power that can save. My fear doesn't stand a chance. Oh, my fear 
doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for the truth of your power. God, that we just don't celebrate your greatness of who you are, because that alone is more than enough. But God, that in your power, you abide with us, in us. God, that your reality becomes ours. Oh, Father, today, whatever we're experiencing, God, Whatever's going on in the world around you, us, Lord Jesus, we receive you. Spirit of God, we receive you. Move in our midst right now. Move in our hearts right now. Fill us with your spirit. Define us by your love. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide. The ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. For you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song for you are good you're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, and you're never going to let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let amen thank you lord and you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down for you are good you good Together amid a busy season to take a breath, to breathe in together 
the life that God gives us. To listen to the beat of God's heart and the blessings and lessons this season brings to us. Each week of Advent, we light this Advent wreath. With its light comes our prayers and our stories. The candle of the second, se second week of Advent is the candle of love. Today, the flame of this candle reminds us of the love that came into the world when Jesus was born and his presence with us. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. Let's pause for a moment to consider the love that Jesus has given us. When have you shared in the gift of love? When have you known God's love come into the world or life around you in the big things or the small? Let us pray. We thank you, Jesus, that you want to bring love and relationship into every life. We thank you for the love that you have brought us. We bring us, we bring to you now our prayers of love for the people and places in our hearts this morning, trusting in your powerful name. Amen. It's great to worship and pray together like that. And now we have the opportunity to reflect on an important Advent theme, the theme of love. And you know what? I've been praying about this a lot this week, how we might approach Advent this year, what might be a good overarching theme for us. And the theme that popped out was this, slow down, slow down. I got it from actually, I got down this, I guess, train of thought from our Advent readings. There's this phrase that keeps coming up. It says that we come together to take a breath and to listen to the beat of God's heart. And you know what? I'm 41 years old. I've been a Christian for a while, but it's only been recently that I've learned the importance of just that, of slowing down in my prayer life, even to the point of slowing down, taking some deep breaths and quieting myself before God, you know, even paying attention to my heartbeat. And also when it comes to reading scripture, I've learned the importance of all of this. Reading each word, not quickly, not in a hurry, but focusing in, reading it slowly like we do in Lectio Divina. You know what, it's in these ways that we, I think, prepare ourselves or quiet ourselves down enough that we can hear from God, we hear from the Holy Spirit. And I wonder why that is. And you know what, two answers came to mind. One, it seems that that's the pace that God moves with us. I was thinking about the Christmas story again, and you know what? It's funny. God literally took baby steps in his mission to save us, <laughs> coming as a baby. And that seems to be the pace that he works. He's not in a hurry when it comes to us. He's patient with us. And that leads to the second reason I think we need to slow down. It's because it's at that speed that real change can happen. The goal is transformation, right? Changing our hearts, changing our character, helping us to become more like Jesus in a real and authentic way. And that takes time. That can't happen overnight. So God moves at the pace that we need him to move at. <laughs> so for all these reasons, I think it's important to slow down so that we can hear from God. And so I'm inviting us this Christmas season, this Advent, to slow down so we can discover God's love, so that we can receive God's peace, and also so that we can find God's joy. And today we're going to slow down to discover God's love in the first part of the Christmas story in the Gospel of Matthew, in Matthew 1. And it's funny, Matthew, a lot of people start out reading that often when they're reading the Bible for the first time, and what they come across is something that might be surprising. It's not an action scene like we'd accept, like we're used to seeing in movies nowadays. It's a genealogy. It's a family tree. 
So what do we do with those when we come across them? Not slow down, we often kind of speed through it. We either skip it completely or we rush through each word, just kind of saying, giving ourselves the pat on the back, well, at least I made it through it and get onto the good stuff. It wasn't that way for the culture that produced this, but it's kind of that way for us. But what happens if we're patient with these words, if we take some time with them? What do we discover? I think we discover some incredible things about God's love. So I want to do that in just a couple ways right now, actually, so you see what I mean. Now, it starts out like this. Actually, the genealogy is framed in a certain way that speaks something important about God's love starts out with this. It says, this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. And then it starts with Abraham. Very, Abraham's important. And then when it comes to David, it says, Jesus was the father of King David. He's the only one that gets that title, the title of king, even though there's other kings on the list. And then There's also this important tidbit. It says in verse 11, Josiah was the father of Jehoiakim and his brothers, and they were born at the time of the exile to Babylon. And then it says after the Babylonian exile, it moves on to some further names. That's an important point. And it finishes off with Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Matthew's up front. Jesus is the Messiah. You piece those together and they point to God's faithfulness, his faithful love. How? Well, Abraham, it starts with him. God made this important promise to Abraham, not only that he would have many children and a long line of, of, of ancestors, but that he, through his line, the world would be blessed. The world would be blessed in incredible ways. So you link Abraham to Jesus and you see God being faithful in this incredible way to his promise to Abraham and to the world through Abraham. Also, David, God promised David that he would have an eternal dynasty. And you read between the lines and it was believed that he was promising David that the Messiah, the savior of God's people, that he would come through the line of David. Again, Jesus being born, that link It's showing God's faithful love. But that part about the Babylonian exile adds a really important twist to all of that and a new dimension to God's faithfulness. Because why the exile? We've had this conversation before in other series, but the exile happened, the biblical writers tell us, because God's people rejected him and were worshiping other gods. And not only that, they were rebellious. They were being unjust mistreating, especially the leaders, were mistreating God's people. So they lost God's protection, and they were taken over by Babylon, taken out of their land, taken into even kind of slavery and exile. So, but God wasn't finished. He was still faithful with them. Jesus is born still through that lineage. This shows God's faithfulness to his people, even though they rejected him and were rebellious. And I think that speaks to God's love, (laughs) that God sticks with us. He sticks to his promises, even if we don't do our end of it. And he's willing to stick with us and be patient with us, even when we might rebel. And even when we slip up and make major mistakes, God loves humankind. He's got that deep of a love for us, for his people. Now, There's also just one other part I want to mention about the genealogy, because if you notice as you're going through, there's some important parts where Matthew gives us just a tiny little bit of commentary. And each time it does that, it's pointing to something. It happens like three or four times. I'm going to point to two. There's this one line near the beginning. It says, it says, Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. There's a couple times it mentions women, like the mother of these children. Here it's Tamar. You might quickly go over that, but if we slow down and think about that for a moment, the story of Tamar is the story of this 
um, wit- of a widow who's actually a Canaanite who is brought into the Israelites through marriage. Her husband dies, and she's mistreated by those who have power in her life, the other men in her life in this time when men had the power and women were vulnerable and did not. She was mistreated. So she had to take matters into her own hands in order to have children in a culture where children, you know, meant a great deal. So hers is a story of an innocent woman kind of being taken advantage of and not cared for. She's part of the lineage of Jesus. Her name is written down. It's showing God's love and mercy and care for those who need him. And there's another one too. It says David, later on, it talks about David, right? David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Who's Uriah's wife? It's Bathsheba. We know that story. Bathsheba is uh, a woman who was, the king saw her, wanted her as his own, so he swoops in to take her. In the process, has her husband killed. Like, this is one of David's darkest moments. So, This is times when God's people are behaving badly. They're mistreating the vulnerable in their their world and the innocent, but yet God's still at work. You know, it shows God's love that can work for good, even in bad circumstances, even in difficult circumstances. And you can imagine what it would be like for Bathsheba and for Tamar to read this. God was at work. They're children would be in the line of the Messiah. That's kind of incredible to think about and to reflect on. So each is telling of God's mercy and God's care and his love that has the power to bring good through bad. Now, also, we discover God's love if we slow down a bit with the story of Joseph. So I want to do that now. Starting at verse 18, let's read it together. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So you know what? In this part of the story, we discover God's love in some amazing ways. We discover it, I think, with Joseph. Think about this from his perspective and what's happening here. Joseph, he hears about his wife's pregnancy, and he wants to move fast, right? That's the way I see it with him. You can see this kind of urgency in it. He sees what's happened, and so he feels like he needs to divorce her. He wants to do it quietly, not publicly, but he feels the need to divorce her. He wants to do what's lawful in this situation. But I see God patiently working with Joseph at his pace. This angel of the Lord comes to talk to him, speaking at his level, saying, don't be afraid. What's happening is by the Holy Spirit, and the child that's coming is going to save his people from their sins. He's given the truth of what's happening, this exciting report of what's going on. He's reassured, don't be afraid. I see in that God's love is patient. Patient with Joseph. He's about to make a major mistake here by divorcing her. But the spirit, or sorry, the angel comes along. God is coming, working at his pace, helping him along to understand what's happening, trying to reassure him. God's love is patient and not forceful. That's what I see in this situation with Joseph. So what we're seeing kind of with the characters in all of this, in the genealogy and in the story of Joseph, the love of God we discover is the faithful love of God, even with people who were rebellious and rejected him. The merciful, 
gracious, caring love of God who can work good for people, even through really difficult circumstances. And then this gentle, non-coercive love to bring close the confused Joseph, and to bring him in on what's happening. But as I said, there's one further dimension to this that I think we discover God's love for all of us in this incredible way when we think about that line from the angel and from Matthew. He's saying, your name of Jesus, which means God saves, because he's going to save people from their sins. He's going to save his people from their sins. And then it also says that this is fulfilling what the prophet wrote. He will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's incredible. This idea here, while we were sinners, rebellious, even rejecting God, Jesus came to save us. God came to save us. And not just for a quick visit, not for a brief time. God grew up among us, intimately involved in his creation, in this incarnational way, even amidst sinful and rebellious humanity. Paul talks about this in Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ came and he died for us. That love for us that's discovered there. Or 1 John 4 says this, This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so we might live through him. That's the love we discover on display in this when we take some time with that beginning of the Christmas story. We discover God's faithfulness, his patience, his mercy and care, and his saving, life-giving love. Now, this isn't just for us, though, right? John goes on in 1 John. My dear, dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. <laughs> That's this other dimension of slowing down in Advent. We slow down for ourselves, but also for those around us. In, so in this slowing down, might we see who needs even our presence and our love that we can bring to them? Slowing down to share time with your children, <laughs> showing them love with your spouse, or with a friend who you know needs some help or needs some care, with your coworkers, or those around who are struggling that you know of that are struggling to meet even their basic needs. It's when we take time, we take a pause, that we might be able to see that and start to extend this love that we've discovered in this story, this love of God. All right, so that's a bit of a reflection today on this theme of love and on this idea of slowing down. And we're at the end of our service now. Why don't we take a moment to pray about what, and reflect on what we've just heard. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time together, for the service that we've had. And especially, we're so grateful for you, Jesus. And as we reflect on your story, the love that we discover, the love of God. First John tells us that you are love. So this is an expression, all an expression of who you are, your character. And it's just incredible. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd help to sink in what needs to today. That we might experience in new ways this season, even this week, even today, your faithfulness in our lives. Or we might experience your mercy and your care. We might experience your saving, life-giving love. Whatever we need, Holy Spirit, we pray that you'd, you'd bring it to us. And help us, Holy Spirit, prompt us to do that for others. Work through us. We know that you desire to do that, to extend your love to others through us. So we pray for that, as for each of us and for the Peer Church itself. Please bless the, as we seek to do that together as a community. So it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I hope this has been a blessing. I look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless. Bye.